Tupperware was invented by Earl Tupper in 1938. Ever since the brand emerged, Tupperware has been an extremely common household product. So much so, the brand name itself has become the generic name for every plastic container in a kitchen today. Tupper worked in a plastics factory and was an inventor of all things. His famous notebooks featured dozens of ideas meant to solve everyday problems. Tupper thought up no-drip ice cream cones, more comfortable corsets, fishing poles that weighted your catch as it was reeled in, and even a fish-propelled boat. While he worked at the plastic factory, he brought home a few of their molding machines and began tinkering at home. After decades of flopped inventions, Tupper's experiments produced the first Tupperware bowls, called Wonder Bowls. With an increase in home refrigeration at this time, food storage proved to be the perfect application for Tupper's durable polymer. The stackable containers organized the fridge and spoke to a growing interest in hygiene. The Wonder Bowl introduced the iconic burp seal, which is the process of closing the lid and reopening a small portion to let out any remaining air. This was the key to keeping food fresh. The idea for lid burping came from the practice of closing paint cans with the intention of creating an airtight seal. Tupper focused heavily on the Wonder Bowl's design working to create an elegant piece of dishware that stood out from other kitchen items sold in stores. Tupper believed he had created a useful piece of art for the modern housewife, but the products were not selling and were failing in stores. Homemakers were cautious of plastics, as they were associated with bad smells, an oily texture, and cheap construction. Tupperware didn't have any of these problems. It was odorless, non-toxic, and lightweight. It was sturdy yet flexible and kept its shape in hot water, and if you dropped it, it bounced without spilling its contents. The bowl's most unique feature also held it back. The airtight lids wouldn't seal unless they were burped beforehand, and that confused customers, who frequently returned them to stores claiming the lids didn't fit. If it wasn't for Brownie Wise, a divorced single mom, Tupperware wouldn't have become a household name. Wise was a successful saleswoman for Stanley Home Products, who only sold its goods through home parties at a time when many sales companies still sold door-to-door. -door. Wise quickly saw the potential of this sales method to sell more than just cleaning products. She formed her own business, patio parties, and began using the model to sell household goods, including Tupperware. She held her first Tupperware party in 1949. Wise came to Tupper with the idea of home party sales, where people could show their friends how Tupperware worked. Parties allowed consultants to demonstrate the uses and advantages of Tupperware, showing attendees how lightweight yet durable the material was, as well as how to burp the airtight seal correctly. By 1951, the concept was so successful that Tupper decided to pull the product from stores and sell exclusively through parties. Soon after Tupper met Wise, she was offered a leadership role in the company, which was unusual for a woman in the 1950s. Within Wise's first year in her role, Tupperware orders surpassed $2 million, all because of the home party idea. Selling Tupperware was a viable side job for many stay-at-home mothers and housewives of the 1950s, 1960s, and beyond. These parties were not about sales pitches, but about a fun atmosphere complete with games. For example, at a party you might see a group of women in funny hats playing party games, tossing lightweight plastic bowls 
back and forth, and chatting about their lives as they passed around an order form for Tupperware. Wise trained Tupperware consultants like herself and established the company's annual jubilee, a pep rally and award ceremony for consultants. With several days of festivities, group activities, and sales meetings, the jubilee encouraged camaraderie and support among female entrepreneurs from across the country. Sales of Tupperware grew so quickly that the company was on track to become a $100 million a year company by 1960. Ironically, the only person who wasn't pleased was Tupper himself. Though Wise had made him a millionaire and had served as the public face of Tupperware, Tupper grew resentful that she seemed to receive all the credit for making Tupperware the huge success that it was. By 1957, Tupper was ready to sell his company, and in that male-dominated era, he was afraid that he'd never find a buyer if the company had such a powerful woman as its second-in-command. In January 1958, he abruptly fired Wise, and eight months later, Tupper sold the company. Tupper stayed on to run Tupperware for the new owners until he retired in 1973. The world has changed a lot since 1958, but Tupperware is still around. Today it's a $4.2 billion company, with sales in nearly 100 countries. And though you can now buy Tupperware direct from the company's website, you can still buy it at a Tupperware party, and there are more than 2.6 million Tupperware ladies worldwide. A Tupperware party is being held somewhere in the world every 1.75 seconds, using the same sales techniques that Brownie Wise perfected more than half a century ago.